Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back once again to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. I'm Gareth, and I just want to thank each and every one of you for connecting today. We're going to have uh, a lot of fun spending time in the Word of God. If you haven't, uh, if you don't have your Bibles with you in front of you and your notebook and your, and, and your, uh, your pen, you can put this on pause quickly. Make sure you get your Bible that you follow along with me and that you take some notes. And you know what? I know that you're going to walk away with something today. And uh, so I'm just um, excited to be here today. Well, we're, we're carrying on with our series, Faith That Works. And this is part three. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm learning a lot. And uh, I'm applying these principles to my life uh, because I need breakthrough in different areas. And I know that if I want different results, I can't be doing the same thing over and over again and not, not getting any results. We know that God, God is alive. God is well. God is able. God hears our prayers. God knows our situation. And I know that, uh, that He has great plans for us. He's got plans to prosper us. He's got plans of a bright future. And so we need to get in with His program. We need to get in with His schedule. We need to fall in line with the will of God for our lives. And we need to look at the Word to see what that plan is. And, and we need to learn how to hear the voice of God that speaks to us so that we can get a direction. You know, when God speaks, direction comes. When God speaks, faith comes. And uh, that gets me all excited. So I hope you got your, your Bibles with you. And we're going to continue on faith that works you know we want to get results we want to see god move within our lives so we need to we need to learn we need to know we need to understand what faith is about you know a lot of times when you when you talk to people and they say when you talk about faith they think it's your your religion you know your faith oh you you're a christian that's your faith no we're talking about faith that that is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things not yet seen so faith is a force faith is a power faith is what moves the hand of god uh, on our behalf and so we need to learn and understand what faith is so today i'm going to talk ab uh, about a few principles about faith regarding faith and the first one i want to look at is forgiveness forgiving by faith and this is something that i actually uh, learned while studying the book that we that we're going through and it's something that, that I, I do, and I know I have to do, but I didn't realize that it takes faith for me to forgive people, to forgive those that have hurt me. So if you have your Bibles, let's look at Luke um, chapter 17, and we're going to read from, from verse 3 to 6. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles sent, said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Increase our faith. So we're talking about forgiveness, and then they respond to Jesus by saying, Lord, increase our faith. And then look how Jesus replies. Look how he responds. He says, And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But hang on now. We were talking about faith. The one minute they were talking about faith and forgiving the brother that sins against them or, or you know, does something against them seven times. Uh, and then Jesus responds, Well, you've got to have faith. All right? So if you're having trouble forgiving others, you'll have to learn and you'll have to draw from your faith. So the answer is having faith, okay? And you can forgive others by faith. That's what Jesus said. He said, offenses will come, but you must forgive. All right? And then he says, look, if, if they trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day they return and, 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 and say to you, I repent, Bible says you need to forgive them. So it wasn't really about uh, how many times. Because, you know, in essence, Jesus was saying it doesn't matter how many times they come to you, you've got to still forgive them. Even if it's a hundred times a day and they repent, they come to you and they ask for forgiveness, you need to still forgive them. 
So when Jesus spoke about forgiving people, the first thing the apostles said was, Lord, give us more faith. So we see that it takes faith to forgive. That's why some people never forgive. They haven't realized that they've got to draw from their faith to do it. You have to do some things by faith. And forgiving is one of those things that we need to do by faith. The Bible says in Romans 1.17 that the just shall live by faith. Very important when it comes to forgiveness. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a choice. It's a decision. Right? So for example, if someone, if you go into business with someone and you're in partnership with, with your friend or, or a family member and you go into partnership and they, they uh, steal money from you, a million dirhams, okay? And I don't know about you, but if that was me, I would be devastated. I would be very upset, probably for a long time. And I would have to draw on my faith to forgive, no doubt. But, you know, when you think of that situation, as an example, you're not going to wake up one morning and feel all these goosebumps and this joy this joy in your heart saying, you know what, today, yes, I feel like forgiving brother so-and-so for defrauding me of a million dirhams. That's not going to happen. But you choose to forgive. You make that decision to forgive. It's like faith. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a decision. And so forgiveness is the same. You forgive by making a decision to forgive because the word teaches us to forgive and it's a command and it's a choice that we need to make. So how do I forgive? Well, you got to forgive by start speaking, by saying, you know what? I make a decision to forgive them in the name of the Lord Jesus because God has forgiven me. Well, I will forgive them. I'm saying in the name of Jesus. I don't hold grudges. I'm saying it. I forgive them in Jesus' name. Right? So what are you doing? You're exercising your faith. You're for forgiving them by faith. And if you keep speaking those words, faith will come and you will forgive them. The apostles realized that it took faith to forgive. They, they, go, they got it. They understood it. And so to paraphrase... In my own words, they were saying, you know, Lord, give us more faith. If someone does us wrong seven times in one day and we have to give them, forgive them, we will need more faith. We're going to need more faith. Now, if you continue to draw your faith without making a deposit, you're going to be overdrawn before long, like a bank account, right? If you, uh, if you keep withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing over in your bank from your bank account, and maybe you've got an overdraft uh, buffer, but you go over that, well, eventually there's going to be nothing there. You're going to start owing the bank, right? So the way it works is you're going to make a deposit. Every time you, you withdraw, you've got to make a deposit. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you've constantly got to be uh, uh, depositing seeds of faith, the, the word, into, into your, your faith bank account. So we see here that forgiving requires faith. Jesus addressed the disciples by saying, you're going to need faith to, to, to forgive. Matthew 5, 48 says, God says, be, be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. You can do it by faith. You can forgive. You might not feel like it, but you can do it by faith. All right. Let's look at faith in the seed. Faith in the seed. Now, when the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. The Lord said, well, okay, you want to increase your faith? Well, if you had faith as a seed. Okay. So Jesus is now is talking about seeds. We, and, then he, and then he responded. They were talking about forgiveness. Then, Jesus, then they said, you need more faith. And then he was teaching him how to increase their faith. Okay, And then he says, you need faith as a seed. So he's talking about faith and he's referring to faith as a seed. Now, forget about the word mustard seed. A lot of us, we've gotten off track because now we focus on the type of seed that, that Jesus speaks about in the Bible. Okay, We know that a mustard seed is small. 
and, uh, and, and we've become so involved and so caught up with the word mastered that we've missed the whole point. Okay, so Jesus wasn't referring to the size of the seed. He said, if you had faith as a seed, if you had faith like a seed. So in other words, you were saying, listen, you've got to look at how a seed works because the way a seed works, that's the kind of faith that I want you to have. Okay, this is very powerful because I, I also just, I recently learned about this as well, that faith is like a seed. Jesus says that it's like a seed, okay? So Jesus says faith works like a seed. And the reason some people can't forgive is because they've never sown that seed. How, do, how does a person sow, sow the seed? Well, you sow it by, by speaking it. You sow it by saying it. So you say, I, you know, I do forgive so and so in the name of Jesus. And if that continues to come out of your mouth, it will get in your heart and it will change your heart. Faith will come. Now, look how the, how the disciples answer, answer Jesus. They, said, they, they answered him and said, Lord, um, increase our faith. And then the Lord said, well, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say, see there, he said, if you had faith like a seed, you would say. So he says, so Jesus is teaching them that you've got to speak because that's how faith like a seed works. Okay. And the way you plant it is by saying it. So he goes on in, in Luke 17, 6, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Okay, so now Jesus is talking about a sycamine tree. I don't even know what a sycamine tree is. Okay, but what has this got to do with a sycamine tree? Well, it's got nothing to do with a sycamine tree. It's, it's got, Jesus was referring to it as if it is an obstacle in your way, in your life, all right? So Jesus, you know, what he was saying was, now guys, you, you don't need more faith, but you need to plant the faith that you do have. If you had faith as a seed, you would say to this obstacle in the path, and I'm sure they were walking down the road and they, Jesus probably saw a sycamine tree there and he, he described a challenge or an obstacle like a sycamine tree. And he was teaching them to speak to that tree. And he says, well, if you tell it, be plucked up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. Well, what would the tree obey? Well, the tree would obey your faithful words because that's how faith like a seed works. The tree would obey your faithful words. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to share some faith secrets with you today. Some faith um, principles that Jesus uh, taught. And so the first one, and we've spoken a little bit about it, is that faith works as a seed. Faith as a seed means faith you're willing to plant. There are some who have faith, but they're not willing to to plant it. So they don't have faith as a seed. They don't have faith as a seed because they're not planting it as a seed. So remember, Jesus said, if you had faith like a seed, you would say to the situation. So you need faith as a seed. Okay, and that means uh, they have faith, but, but not enough faith in that faith to speak to act in it. Those are those ones that don't speak. Okay, so they're not, they don't have faith in, in what they're saying. That's having faith in your faith, having faith in what you're saying. So Jesus said you must have faith in what you're saying. You've got to speak to that thing and it's going to obey you. But a lot of people don't speak to that thing, to that situation, because they don't believe it. They don't have faith in, 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 in the words that they are speaking. But Jesus says faith like a seed speaks. Okay. Now, let's say if you had one grain of wheat. Let's say you had a little grain of wheat. Well, what can you do with a grain of wheat? Well, you can't make biscuits, you can't make cookies, you can't make a whole lot of cereal with that because it's just a grain. So what are you going to do with that grain? Well, you've got to plant it. The best use of that seed would be to plant it. And if you're smart enough to plant it, the next year you'll have so much, so much more, right? So faith as a seed 
has the ability to multiply. In other words, the DNA of a seed has multiplication inside of it, okay? But it must, be, it must first be planted by, by speaking it. If you had faith as a seed, you would say, Jesus said, if you had faith like a seed, you would say, okay? So faith speaks. What is Jesus talking about? Well, in this instance, he was talking about forgiveness. He was talking about forgiving seven times in a day. Unforgiveness can be a very big obstacle to a lot of people. But now he was teaching us a principle. The obstacle could be any number of things. The obstacle could be sickness. The obstacle could be financial lack and debt and poverty. The, the obstacle could be a, a rough relationship, a, a, a marriage that, that is, not, is not going well. It can be any obstacle, but Jesus was, he was addressing unforgiveness and he was saying, you're going to need faith for this. But if you would speak words, you will tell uh, this tree to, to move and it's going to move. Okay, so understand the principle that is involved in removing the obstacles of life. If you had faith as a seed, you would say, okay, number two. Faith secret number two, unforgiveness is a thief of faith. Someone said, you know, they might say, you know, I, Gareth, I can't forgive. I've tried, but I just, I, I can't do it. I can't forgive brother so-and-so. I just don't know, you know, you don't know what he's, he's done to me. It's so bad. Okay, no, I, I don't know what he's done to you, but I know what unforgiveness will do to you. Unforgiveness will steal your faith. And possibly your life and it might even take your health that's what unforgiveness can do to you so you've got to learn how to how to talk to that thing to that unforgiveness and tell it where to go amen Romans 12 21 don't be overcome with evil but overcome evil with good amen number three faith secret number number three plant a seed for what you need Plant a seed for what you need. You know, this has become such a powerful lesson, such a powerful truth in my life. And I've seen how this work has, has been working for me in my life. So I'll give you an example. Years ago when I knew that my wife, Hermoyne, I was going to marry her. She was the one. God spoke to me. I had peace. I knew that, you know, I'm going to propose to, to Hermione. I, I, I love her. I want to marry her. And I needed to get a, an engagement ring. And I'm going to propose, propose to her. And at the time, I was living in South Africa. I was, I was in the ministry full time. And uh, I didn't have the money for a ring. But I had faith. And I knew about the power of a seed. So what I did was I, I, I went to the mall and I grabbed one of these brochures. It was an Ameri American Swiss, American Swiss, yes. And I, I took one of these brochures and I, 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 saw, I looked at a ring that I really, really liked. It was a very plain band. It was a simple platinum band with a nice diamond in it. Very simple, elegant, or at least I thought it was elegant. I liked it. And that's the one that I wanted. And I took this thing, this picture of this ring, I cut it out, bam, I pasted it on my, my fridge. And I didn't have money for it. It was a few thousand rand, which I couldn't afford at that time. But I had a seed. I had a financial seed. And I had Mark 11, 23, 24 uh, that I was um, trusting God for. That was my, my and I sowed my seed into good soil i had it there and months uh, on this in december time in our summer holidays was when i was going to uh propose and so i had a few months to get my faith to a, to a level and, and trust god to get this ring by by december time so that i can propose to to uh my wife to be and so you know month after month there was no ring, but I had my picture. 
I had my seed that I'd sown. I had the scripture in my heart and I was just confessing every time I'd see it. You know, every time I'd make food, every time I had people come over, they would look and see and, you know. And uh, December time came. I was on vacation in Cape Town. And I was there for two weeks and Homoyne came down from Dubai and she had her, uh, her friend that was, was with her, her chaperone. And we were about a week into this, into this uh, vacation and I had no ring and I knew that this if I don't propose if it doesn't happen now it's not going to happen and I, I got a bit worried but I still had peace uh, there was no ring in sight and my money was also running out because of the holiday you know uh, uh, entertaining people going yeah go on, on vacation it uh, it costs money and but I also needed money to drive back to uh, to Pretoria Anyway, what happened was, is on, on the last few days, um, I had a friend in, 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 in the car. And it was, it was, like I said, it's summertime. I had my board shorts on. I had my flip-flops, t-shirt. And there was a, a few days left before our holiday ended. And my friend in the car said, Gareth, are you going to propose to Homoin? And, you know, I didn't say nothing to my friend. And I said, yes, I, I am. I'm planning to. And then she asked me, well, do you have a ring? And, um, you know, I, I look at her strange and, and I said, no, I don't have a ring. Well, you know, when, when are you going to buy the ring? Well, you know, I don't, you know, I, I felt a bit embarrassed because I didn't have the money and I didn't really know how to say it. And, and I was trusting God. And she said, Gareth, we need to go get the ring now. And, you know, I'm like trying to convince her not to get the ring for me. You know, because I haven't said anything to anybody. And, you know, I looked at her strange and I said, all right, let's do this, you know. And uh, I've been trusting God. I've been sowing my seed. I've been standing on the word of God. And what happened was, is we raced to the closest uh, mall. Now, what happened was, is my slop that I was wearing, it broke. It literally broke as I got out the car. And what happened was, as I got out the car, it broke. And so I took these slops on my feet and I threw them into the car. And I walked out with my costume, with a t-shirt and no shoes, into the mall and no money. Hallelujah. But I had a seed that I had, that I had sown. And you know what? When God moves, you, you, you move with Him. Hallelujah. When you see the opportunity... You take it. And it reminds me of blind Bartimaeus. You know, blind Bartimaeus, when he heard Jesus was walking past, he started shouting. He Because he knew that his miracle was walking past. Come on. And he shouted and he went crazy because he knew this was his moment. This was his opportunity. And many times we miss our opportunity because we're, we're either we're afraid of how we look or we, we were too dignified or... Or I don't know what, but but blind Bartimaeus started shouting loud, and then the people around him try try to keep him quiet. And, you know, hush, hush, keep you know, and then he just shouted louder, and, and and that was like my 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 moment where where I had no, sh I was walking into the mall, no shoes, no money, but I was walking into a miracle. And we walked into the first uh, jewelry store, and we asked for engagement rings, and we looked around, and there was nothing. So I just, I walked out quickly because I knew time was short. We had to do this quickly. And I walked into the, into the next jewelry store. And I said to the lady, it was an elderly lady. I said, I just said to her, engagement rings. She took out this box. She opened it up. And there, there were about, uh, uh, like a whole row was the ring that I had on my, on my fridge. It was a single platinum band with a diamond in it. Now, you must remember, I was trusting God for a certain ring and for a certain amount. But when this lady took out this box, it started from small diamond to, to, to big, to bigger, to biggest. You, you know what I mean? So it, it progressed like that. And so my friend is, yeah, she's going to pay. And so I said, yes, there's the ring. It was a plat single platinum diamond ring. And I, you know... I pointed the smallest one because that's how what I had on my fridge. And that's the image that I had within me. And I said, yes, that's the one. She goes, no, bigger. 
So I point to the one next to it. And I say, yeah, yeah that's okay. We will. She says, no. <laughs> Vigor. Praise God. Anyway, to cut the long story short, bought the ring. With, with, I, got, I raced back home. I booked a, a, a reservation, made a reservation at a beautiful restaurant where it had a pathway down to the, to the Komiki Beach in Cape Town. And I bought some flowers with the last bit of money I had. And that night I proposed to my wife and she said yes. And I just want to encourage someone listening today that, you know, if you don't have enough for the need, then you need to sow a seed. Hallelujah. And I've seen how, how God multiplies that seed within, our, with, with, within your life. And so when you have a need, you need to plant a seed. The gospel according to Jesus says, if you had faith as a seed, you wouldn't need more faith. You would simply plant the faith that you have and it would produce. And you plant it by speaking it. And so we need to speak. And I, that's what I did. I, kept, I, I also sowed a financial seed. But Jesus says, if you had faith as a seed, you would, you would speak. You would say. And that scripture, I would, I would constantly speak that scripture over. And I would constantly say, thank you, Jesus. I have my ring. I have it in the name of Jesus. And it just was a matter of time before I, I, a, a miracle happened. Praise God. Next point, number four. Faith as a seed causes you to speak. Whatever you desire, you speak based on the authority of God's word. Jesus said it would obey you. I love Matthew 17, 20. What happened was is the disciples were trying to cast out a, a demon out of a boy. They couldn't get it right. And so they came to Jesus all despondent and discouraged. They said, Jesus, you know why? Why couldn't we cast this demon out of the boy? And then Jesus said, listen to how he responds. He said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. And nothing shall be impossible for you. And I love that because Jesus says, Listen, if you have faith like a seed, you would speak, and you would speak to the mountain. And if you do that, nothing will be impossible for you. In other words, no matter what you're facing in your life, no matter what you're going through, if you exercise the faith that you have by planting it and speaking to the situation, it will obey you. And then nothing will be impossible. In other words, there will be no situation that you can't uh, speak your way out of. So Jesus said, faith as a seed, you shall say. So faith as a seed speaks. Amen. That was Matthew 17, 20. Number five, faith in the substance. We need to have faith in the substance. When you have faith in your faith, you have faith in the substance of things. You're not only planting a seed of faith, you're having faith in the seed that you planted. You're having faith in the seed that you have planted. Jesus said, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And some, some say, well, you know, these people, these people that speak to mountains, they speak to things. I think they're, you know, they're a bit weird. How can they speak to trees? How can they speak to things? Well, when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus spoke to a tree. Jesus spoke to the weather. Jesus spoke to the storm. Jesus said, if you speak and have faith like a seed and speak, the mountain is going is, is gonna to move. And uh, what people do actually is, is they... They plant fear by, by, by speaking what they fear. That which I feared has come upon me. And so they, put, they have faith in their faith, but it's faith in the negative. They're having faith in fear. In other words, they're, they're speaking what, what they believe is going to happen uh, based on fear. They say things like, you know what, I'm not going to have money to cover my mortgage. You know what, I'm not going to have money to cover my, my, my mobile my bill. You know, And so they're having faith in what they're saying. So they're already you making use of this principle, but it's in reverse gear. It's in the opposite direction. So Jesus is saying, yes, this thing works. You're going to have what you say, but you've got you to speak the things that you want, not the things that you don't want. All right. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, As it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. And this is a spiritual law. What you believe, 
you will speak. And then number six, good or bad seed grows when planted. Whatever you plant is going to grow. Okay, so when people speak, they're planting seed. And they will plant that seed day after day. They'll fertilize it. They'll water it. And so they have faith in their fears, like I said just now. So what are they doing? People are calling things that are not as though they are. Romans 4, 17. So we're going to learn how to, how to speak words of faith. Hallelujah. Well, I think our time is up. So just to, to, to recap as we close, we, we have faith. Faith works as a seed. So Jesus taught this. He's trying to teach his, his disciples this. When it came to um, forgiving, he said, you're going to have to do that by faith. In other words, you're going to have to speak it by faith. So faith works as a seed. We looked at Luke 17. Plant a seed for what you need. You've got to plant some seeds. If you don't have enough, if you, if you have a need and you don't have enough for the need, you've got to plant a seed and, 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 and point that seed in the direction of your need. And it's, it's a point of contact to release your faith into that need that you, that, you, that you trust in God for. Faith as a seed causes you to speak. Matthew 17, 20. When you start applying this principle, Jesus said, Listen, if you start doing this, nothing is going to be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. In other words, he's saying, if you learn how to speak to things, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. If you release your faith by speaking and believing in what you're saying, nothing is going to be impossible for you. We got to have, which, which really is having faith in the substance, having faith in what you're saying, having faith in your faith. And then the last one, Good or bad seed grows when you plant it. Do not be fooled, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. Hallelujah. Well, I pray that you've been blessed. Faith that works. You know, the, these, these, these principles that I'm teaching you, I've seen them work in my life. Not because I'm all that and a bag of chips, because I'm, you know, somebody. No, it's because I apply i'm applying these principles to my life doesn't matter what background you're from what what race you are what language what country where you're living your financial status doesn't matter principles work for anyone who applies them and this is what we're, we're learning to do we're, we're, we're learning about faith that gets results faith that works and so i want to encourage you don't give up don't grow weary in doing good because in in due season you are going to reap a reward you know the bible says without faith it is impossible to please god it's impossible to please god without faith so faith is so so important and then it goes on to say that that those who diligently seek the lord when though when you diligently seek the, seek the lord and believe that he is he is a rewarder he will be a re, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so don't give up don't don't give up hopes don't stop speaking words of life don't stop speaking words of faith because in in due time you are going to catch up to your harvest praise god well as usual i'd like to pray with you today and uh, and trust god for a miracle in your life come on let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for this word today Lord, we ask that you forgive us for speaking words of death. Forgive us for speaking words contrary to what you have said. Forgive us for speaking a bad report. But Lord, we repent today and we commit to speaking words of life. We commit to speaking your word. We commit to speaking the things that we, that we want to see that, it, that is according to your word. You said to us, Father, if we had faith as a seed, we would speak to the mountain we would speak to the sycamine tree we would speak to that obstacle we would speak to that situation so today father we speak in faith we call things that are not as though they are we speak over our bodies and i declare 
that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. I pray that you are healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to that debt in your life. Get out in the name of Jesus. You said that when you command the blessing, it will come upon us and that you will command that blessing on us and in our storehouse. I pray that you will increase. I pray that you will be fruitful. Lord, I pray over marriages and families. I pray that there will be life and love. And I thank you for healing. I thank you that there is peace in your home. I thank you that there is joy in your house. I thank you that you will live and not die. I thank you that you will walk through the fire and you will not be burned. I thank you that you will get to the other side, even though you might be in a storm. Lord Jesus, when you said, let's go to the other side, your Lord, your word is eternal. Your word is everlasting. Your word is the truth. Your word is, is above all every other words word and so we we hang on to that today i thank you lord that we will make it to the other side i thank you lord that you are with us ye though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will not fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thank you jesus you are with me all all the way every step of the way and i pray your blood over everyone listening today i speak life i speak blessing i speak the blood over you and i thank you for what you are doing Lord, we love you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and all the praise. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We receive our miracle. We receive our breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Let's uh, uh, connect again over this weekend. Uh, we're going to have church at home. Make sure that you get to Pastor Dill's messages. And next week, we'll continue in, in, in the same line of faith, faith that works, we'll look at part four and I'm going to share some more powerful faith principles with you. Well, God bless you. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.